みんながそばにいてくれるわ痛いから我慢しろよ全力こうマイ話が通じないなら隙を見せるのはほんの一瞬だふん Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my updated Child Guide. As you know, Child Guide is second rerun banner. It basically just came out. And so I decided that it's time to make an updated Child Guide covering everything you need to know about this character. I've been playing him since he first came out almost a year ago. And I have hundreds of hours on this character who honestly has quite a lot of advanced mechanics and tips that I can share with you after having played him and tested him for so long. In this video, I'm gonna be covering his best builds, team comps, artifacts, all that, but also going into more detail on his rotations and how exactly to play him so that you can get the most value out of this character. Before I begin, I want to give a special thanks to Zajef77 for doing the math on the weapon ranking that we will cover a bit later in this video. And I also want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. With that being said, let's get into the guide. So the first thing we're going to do in this video is talk about Child's talents and give you guys a general idea on how to play him. And then we're going to move on to his builds and go into more advanced tips, rotations, and all that. First of all, I want to cover one of Child's unique mechanics, which is Riptide. Riptide is this sort of debuff that will be applied on enemies through multiple different ways. For example, child's charge attack can apply riptide but the main way you apply it is just passively while attacking inside of your elemental skill as you guys can see through one of your talents when you are dealing damage in your elemental skill anytime you crit you'll apply riptide on enemies which will then explode and deal massive amounts of aoe hydro damage this makes child not only very satisfying to play but also amazing against once again multiple enemies now the damage that riptide does varies based on how you proc it or basically the effect of riptide can vary based on how you proc it but when you're inside of your elemental skill which we'll talk about i guess right now whenever you hit an enemy that's affected by Riptide, it will unleash a slash that does AoE Hydro damage, which is insane at fighting multiple enemies. The way your elemental skill works, if you don't know, is it converts your damage into Hydro damage and changes your attacks from ranged to melee. You become basically a sword user who can attack rapidly, apply Hydro rapidly, and deal massive amounts of damage through his normal and charge attacks. Your charge attacks become very good in this dance, so they are something you want to weave in, but we will go into optimal combos a bit later in this video. The big thing to note though is that this stance change means you want to stay on child and DPS on him auto attack on him and while your other team is supporting you or dealing damage from off field while you are auto attacking and applying hydro very fast. A key thing to note with this ability is the cooldown and the duration of this skill. In fact the duration can last up to 30 seconds. You can stay inside of this stance for very long however it's not typically what I recommend since the cooldown of this ability scales based on how long you're inside of it. Effectively, since you can cancel this skill at any point, the cooldown based on when you cancel it will vary from 6 seconds to 36 seconds, with the maximum being 45 if you just never cancel it. Because of that, you want to stay inside of Child's skill for not too long, so that your elemental skill cooldown doesn't last a year. For example, if you stay in Child's elemental skill for 9 seconds, the cooldown of your skill will only be 15 seconds. When you're inside of your elemental skill for those 9 seconds, you will be not only applying Hydro very fast, dealing massive amounts of damage, but also allowing your off-field supports to deal damage off of your normal attack. And then during your child's downtime, during the cooldown of a skill, you can swap to your other characters, use their skill, use their bursts, get your burst back. And then when you swap back the child, your skill should be back up. That being said, I will go into more detail on the rotations a bit later in this video. I just wanted to give a brief rundown of it in the skill section because this ability can get confusing if you don't know how it works. Also, something nice to know about his elemental skill is that it actually does gain buffs from some external sources that will buff your normal and charge attacks. A popular example is the Heart of Death set or even Rust that will both increase your normal and charge attack damage, which does work with child inside of his elemental skill. And I also thought it was important to mention that when you press your skill, it applies hydro around you. It does an initial hit, as you can see the stance hit damage. It's not a big hit, but it mainly applies hydro, which can be important to know. Other than just that though, child also has an amazing, amazing elemental burst that deals insane amounts of area of effect damage. His elemental burst has two forms, two ways to use it. You can either just press it when you're outside of your skill or when you're inside of your skill. So either in your range stance or your melee stance, and they each have a different effect. In your range stance, you'll fire an arrow in front of you which does a pretty good amount of hydro damage and then if you're in your melee stance it'll swing all around you which does even more damage in your range stance and regarding which burst you should use between the melee form and the range form it highly depends on what you're doing while the melee one will give you more damage so if you're trying to speed run you want to one shot something you can use the melee stance the range one is what i typically recommend since it has many advantages not only will it refund that energy that 20 energy but it also has a much shorter animation and isn't used inside of your skill since for the slash you have to be inside of your melee stance right as it says 
defense. For the ranged burst, you don't, meaning your elemental skill can be on cooldown, so you can use it during your downtime. Whereas for the melee stance, if you use it during your elemental skill's duration, it will not only eat up some time of your rotation, but it will also make your skill's cooldown longer, since you're staying inside of your skill for longer so that you can use your burst, if that makes sense. This ability also deals additional damage against enemies affected by Riptide from this Riptide Blast damage. Another thing to note about Child passively is that he increases your whole party member's normal attack level by one, which is just a nice passive to have. And something to keep in mind with your normal attack is that leveling these only buffs your range stance and some Riptide damage, to where the first part is really not relevant since you're not really using his bow attacks. Although it does increase the Riptide damage when you do defeat an opponent. As you can see, Riptide Burst, defeating an opponent by Riptide creates a Hydro Burst that inflicts the Riptide status on nearby opponents. That Riptide Burst damage does increase on your level, but it is a pretty small increase to where I only really recommend getting this to maybe level 6 and then not wasting any more resources leveling it since it isn't the biggest DPS upgrade. Overall, for your talent priority, leveling your elemental skill first is typically the way to go since it does buff your normal attack and charge attack damage inside of the stance, and then your elemental burst is also a very good upgrade as well that you should go for after that. Now getting into how to build this specific character, there's actually quite a lot of options. I do want to start by saying that the Heart of Death set is your best in slot overall, but there's a lot of other viable options that can be better for you, especially if you have better substats on them. Because of that, I do want to say that the stats of your artifacts, the substats, main stats, are very important and should be factored in when you're choosing the artifact set for your child. That being said, the Heart of Death set is a set that was basically made for child. This set gives you 15% Hydra damage bonus on its 2-piece, and then the 4-piece will increase your normal and charge attack damage by 30% for 15 seconds after you use your skill. Since child usually wants to stay in his elemental skill for not too long, and again, we'll cover the rotations later in the video, but this 4-piece set will buff you for long enough to where you're fully benefiting from this 30% damage you're gaining to your normal and charge attacks. The one thing I want to specify though is that Child's damage is very mixed. As we talked about in the talent section, not only does he do a lot of normal and charge attacks, but his burst also does massive amounts of damage and so does his Riptide. And so while the set effect is amazing for Child and the best one overall, it doesn't buff all of your kit to where there's many other options that could be comparable and give you similar damage, especially if you have better substats on it. So let's talk about the other ones that you can go as well. The 2 piece Noblesse Oblige is very good because it gives you 20% burst damage and Child's burst is really good, especially if you are vaporizing it, to where this 2 piece set can be a great option. There are other 2 piece sets that are quite good. 2 piece Glad or Reminiscence that gives you 18% attack are just pretty nice overall since attack percent buffs basically your entire kit and is just very nice to have for child. However, one upside of the set that I want to point out is that since Emblem of Severed Fate is such a good set for other characters, for support characters like Raiden, uh, Sing Chu, Shang Ling, Beidou, and a few others, it's a set that most players are going to farm. Since Emblem and Reminiscence come together, it's a lot easier to get a good Reminiscence set than many other sets in the game to where it is something you can run on child if your substats are amazing on it. That being said, while the 2-piece is generally good, for the 4-piece, basically whenever you cast your elemental skill, if your character has 15 energy or more, you'll lose 15 energy, and then you'll buff your normal charge and plunge attacks by 50% for 10 seconds. This is obviously a pretty nice buff, but it has some pretty significant downsides that I want to specify. The main one is that losing 15 energy on child when you press your skill can be quite detrimental, especially since you often want to use your range burst at the start of a rotation, and then use your elemental skill, you can no longer do that with this set, since you want to use your skill when you have energy, 15 or more, to where it can make your rotations quite weird. However, the damage you gain to your normal and charge attacks is very nice, so it is something worth Worth considering, but Heart of Death is still better overall. The one thing I want to specify with the set though is that since it makes your bursts kind of weird and when you're using your bursts in which rotations kind of weird, I do say the set is more viable with something like a fireworks team where you're running Child with Beto and Fischl since you're usually not vaporizing your child's burst. Whereas if you're pairing Child with Shang Ling and Bennett, you're usually going to be vaporizing your burst so it's a very big part of your damage to where losing out on a burst because of this artifact set is typically not that good. And I do want to mention that it's a set that can be better for one rotation only if you can clear that fast but overall this is mainly just a decent alternative if you don't have a better set but it is not child's new best in slot as i see a lot of people say it is because of the many issues especially regarding doing multiple rotations for sustained damage because of the energy that you do lose overall and i don't want to make this too confusing but child's best set is the four piece heart of death it's just a great set overall he does have other good options though like a two piece noblesse oblige especially for burst damage two piece gladiator giving 18 percent attack and two piece reminiscence as well being very good two pieces with four piece reminiscence being a viable alternative
alternative, especially in specific team comps. Lastly, I do want to mention that the four piece Thunder Soother can be good in the Fireworks team once again if you are constantly electro charging, since it will buff your damage by 35%, but it isn't as good as some of the sets I mentioned earlier. Now, for the specific artifact stats you want, it's actually much more straightforward. In general, you want crit damage, crit rate, and attack percent to just buff your damage overall, make you crit more and deal more damage. Elemental Mastery can be nice for maximizing your burst damage because Elemental Mastery can greatly increase your child's vaporize damage or reaction damage. But for a general build, like when you're on field auto attacking, Elemental Mastery isn't really your biggest concern. And you also typically don't need energy recharge since you generate enough particles just from child and his off field supports. Now for your main stats, you usually want to go for attack percent on the sands, hydro damage bonus on the goblet, and a crit, rate, or damage circlet for maximum damage. For vaporize one shot builds, elemental mastery can be a decent sands, but it's not typically what I recommend as attack percent's better overall. Now let's talk about child's weapons, which is a pretty important and unique section. Child has some weird interactions with certain weapons, so I want to clarify every single weapon and then give you guys an exact weapon ranking so you guys know what to choose. First of all though, I want to say that some weapons work with a skill, whereas others don't. For example, something like Rust will increase your normal attack damage greatly, while also decreasing your charge attacks inside of your skill. But a weapon like Stringless, while it can be good to buff your burst damage and give you elemental mastery, won't actually increase your skill's normal and charge attack damage, or the damage of your child in his melee stance. The increased skill damage here applies to the initial hit of your stance change when you press E, but it doesn't apply to the normal or charge attacks inside of your skill. Similarly, something like the Slingshot does not work with Child, as the effect will not proc in your melee stance. Overall though, Child has many good weapons for basically every type of player. His best weapons are the 5 stars, all being very good for him, with the new bow being the best one overall, because the effect is just very nice and it does have, you know, a lot of crit rate and a decent base attack. This bow will increase basically every part of your kit. First of all, it buffs your skill and burst damage, similarly to Stringless, so buffing your burst and only the initial hit of your skill, which doesn't matter too much. Then it will also give you a ton of attack percent after you use a normal attack, charge attack, skill or burst and it hits an opponent, giving you up to 48% attack at refinement 1, which is absolutely amazing. So that's the best weapon overall, but all 5 stars are pretty similar in strength, with the Thundering Pulse and Skyward Heart both being amazing as well, because they give you massive amounts of stats. As you can see, Thundering Pulse will give you a bunch of crit damage and a good effect, whereas Skyward Heart gives you a very high base attack with crit rate and crit damage as well on the effect. The 3 5 stars I just talked about are all pretty similar in strength, with Amos Bow also being pretty viable, a bit worse than the last 3, but still good because it gives you a lot of attack percent, and so it's basically just a stat stick for child. Other amazing weapons include Verdescent Hunt, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite weapons in the game, and I think it has so much synergy with Child. Not only is the stat distribution very good, because it gives you a lot of crit rate, and despite its relatively low base attack, it will give you so much DPS because of the amazing effect, the crit rate, and you can make up for the base attack by running Child with Bennett and Noblesse Oblige, increasing his attack greatly, which makes up for it. If you don't know what this weapon does, the effect will group up enemies when you do a normal attack, creating this cyclone, pushing all enemies together, allowing your child to destroy them all with his Riptide, and deal even more AoE damage. So Verdescent Hunt is overall the 4 star I recommend the most and what I believe to be his best 4 star, but there are other really good options. A good example is Rust, which gets a lot better with refinement, although this weapon is pretty overrated. It's good and you can use it if you have it, because it does greatly increase your normal attack damage, but decreasing your charge attacks kinda sucks, and this ends up being so much damage percent that you're gaining that you end up hitting diminishing returns, meaning that since you're gaining so much damage percent from this, your Hydro Damage Ascension Passive and your Hydro Goblet, that basically the more damage you're gaining, the less it actually buffs you, and it also only increases a part of your kit, being your normal attacks. The attack percent stats are nice though, so it's definitely a weapon that is good for child if you do have it. Other good options include Stringless, especially for your burst damage, and something like Blackcliff Warbow, which can be free to play friendly if you have the Star Glitter, and also the free to play blacksmith weapons are very good for child. There's two good options, Prototype Crescent and Hamayumi. Prototype Crescent is good if you proc the passive, so if you're taking the time to do an aim shot on an enemy's weak point, you can quick scope this, meaning you only charge it for a fraction of a second to proc the effect, giving you a lot of attack percent making it a good option, whereas Hamayumi is a more generalistic weapon, which can be the better blacksmith option if you don't proc the Crescent passive, since it does buff your normal and charge attacks. Another thing I want to mention is that if you're using a weapon like Rust or Thundering Pulse, your optimal combos or what you're normally going to be doing can change, and we will see this in the next section, but basically you will be doing more normal attacks before every charge attack. Since these weapons will buff your normal attacks more, Rust does decrease your charge attack damage, meaning you can typically go for like 5 normal attacks into a charge attack for a more optimal rotation. 
For an exact weapon ranking of what you should be using on child, here it is in case you have any questions. This does depend on a lot of things though, like your substats, your artifact sets, what your rotation is, your team comps and all that. So it isn't something you should be taking out of context, but it can give you a general idea on what weapons to run as there are many good options for child. I do want to point out that the five star weapons are really good, except Elegy for the end, which I didn't mention because that's a support bow, but all the other five stars are really good with a lot of very good four star options like Bird and Hunt, the free to play bows, and even something like Rust being pretty good. I do want to mention that this weapon ranking assumes a nine second rotation with five and two C's, so two normal attacks into a charge attack, which is typically child's optimal rotation, as well as vaporizing your burst. But we'll talk about child's optimal rotations, as I said, in the next section. Now for one of the most important sections of the video, some advanced tips and a rotation guide from my experience playing child for so long. First of all, I will be saying that while my child is C1, I will be talking about a C0 child, so no constellations, because number one, that'll help more players, and number two, it's usually optimal regardless. And if you're C1, it's a bit more flexible, or you can stay in your skill for a bit longer. Here are some tips regarding child and his optimal rotations. First of all, regarding your optimal combos, typically you want to be doing two normal attacks into a charge attack like that, and you can spam that basically non-stop since it does do pretty good damage. Inside of your elemental skill, you can do that five times if you want an optimal rotation, as doing five combos of that, so two normal attacks into a charge attack, will be perfect for one rotation, taking around nine seconds in your elemental skill for a 15 second cooldown on it, making for a 24 second rotation total, and then during the downtime, right, during the 15 second cooldown, you're spending that time swapping to your other characters, using their skill, using their burst, getting their burst back by funneling energy, getting particles, all that stuff, to where by the time your skills back up off cooldown for child, you can use all your other supports burst, swap your child, use his skill again, auto attack and all that. Also something to mention is that child, since he's such a great enabler, I talked about this earlier and in my last video, since he applies hydro so fast, while he is on field auto attacking, you will allow your Shangling to vaporize, your Beto to proc, electro charge, deal a lot of damage. And so having good supports or well invested supports with optimal rotations, knowing what you're doing is very important for child so that you can get the most value out of him. I do want to point out though that if you're running rust or thundering pulse, as I mentioned earlier, the rotation can change. While doing two normals into a charge, can still be pretty good. Doing five normal attacks into a charge attack is what's usually optimal given the passive of those weapons, allowing you to do more normal attacks into a charge attack and also being easier to do, costing less stamina. Also, something I wanted to point out is that if you are running Child Changling, which is one of the best teams in the game, you can actually double swirl both Pyro and Hydro to buff your damage and reduce the resistance of the opponent. Uh, which is really, really good and a big DPS increase. The way you do this is by running an Anemo character like Sucrose or Kazua. With Kazua, it can be a bit easier, but it's pretty easy with both. And what you can do is yes. swirl both elements with either Guoba or different strategies. The way this works is, number one, Guoba will self-infuse with Pyro, which means when you swirl Guoba, it's like you're swirling Pyro, which buffs your team, and then you're also swirling Hydro since you applied Hydro to the enemy. Also, against multiple enemies, this can be done a lot easier. All you have to do is apply Hydro to one enemy, Pyro to another, swirl them together, with someone like Kazuo or Sucrose, and you will swirl both elements, buffing your damage significantly. Also, something I wanted to add uh, that I think is worth mentioning is that to apply Hydro at the start, there's a few ways to do it, but you can just get it off of your initial skill activation to where you can just activate it and swap if that's something you want to do. So for an example rotation, let's use Child and Shang Ling. To show you guys the optimal rotation, what you're going to want to do is start by applying Hydro onto the enemy with Child's skill, then use Bennett's Burst, which will actually keep the enemy Hydro infused still, then you drop Guoba, and then when he self-infuses himself with Pyro, you'll swirl both of them with your Sucrose, Kazuo, whatever, swirl the Hydro and the Pyro, then swap to Shang Ling, use her burst, giving thrilling tales from Sucrose as well, then you swap into your child, use your ranged burst initially, then use your elemental skill, and do your normal damaging rotation, which is two normal attacks into a charge attack usually, and you can do that for nine seconds, staying on child for nine seconds, weaving in normal and charge attacks, and then when you're done, you can swap into your support characters, use all your skills, bursts, get your Shang Ling's burst back, and rinse and repeat. Now moving on, let's talk about Child's Constellations, which I actually have one of, but he really doesn't need Constellations, and in terms of 5-star Constellation value, he is at one of the worst, like a C6 Child versus a C0 Child, the DPS he'll actually increase really isn't that much, but let me go into more detail. First of all, his Constellation 1 is really nice for quality of life, but it isn't something that you need. It doesn't actually increase your team's damage all that much, it is nice, it's a pretty good Constellation, but mainly for comfort, for quality of life, for flexibility in your rotations, without being something that you need. Your rotation's still going to be similar as I showed earlier, but you can stay inside of your melee stance for a bit longer, like about two seconds longer. Overall though, it's not the biggest constellation and is mainly just, as I said, a quality of life upgrade. Your second constellation gives you more energy, which honestly isn't that needed anyways. And then your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, but funnily enough, your C3, which just increases your skills talent level, is actually the biggest DPS increase from a constellation if you play child optimally. That's just because leveling your elemental skill is such an important upgrade that getting three levels is really nice and will just increase your numbers overall with every hit. 
Your fourth constellation is a weird and misunderstood one. Basically what I like about this constellation is that it enables child to be played as a support, especially like a free support with someone like Ganyu, and it just enables a different playstyle. For main DPS, it can make you lose a bit of damage to your own child, but it can also buff your team's damage, making it worth it overall. Basically this constellation will give you more Riptides, as it will apply Riptide passively when the opponent is marked, as it will deal damage, triggering Riptide Slash when an opponent's affected by Riptide, so you will gain damage from it, but it can mess up some reactions if you're trying to vaporize your child burst. This can make it weird to use but overall it's typically worth it since number one it enables playing child as a support and two it can increase your team's damage by giving you more riptides and some energy but it can be weird to play around especially if you're running child as a DPS. Lastly your C6 isn't needed but it enables a new child playstyle as well resetting your elemental skill cooldown when you do use your burst and this constellation overall is one of the worst C6s in terms of just performance like it's not going to do as much damage as like a Ganyu C6, a Shao C6, Eula C6 all that and so it's really not something worth pulling for for your damage because it basically just enables a different playstyle where you can use child all the time as a main DPS without needing anyone else on your team. That being said, it is more quality of life than worthwhile since it doesn't really give you that much damage. Now let's talk about one of the most important sections, child's team comps. This is obviously something that I've mentioned throughout the entire video so far, but that now I'm going to go into much more detail on because it's very important to play child efficiently. You need to have a good team and a good rotation so that you can be dealing damage all the time with child even when your skill's on cooldown. His two best teams in my opinion are the following. First of all, the child international team it's called, where you pair child with Shangling, Bennett, and then a flex character. This this is usually an Anemo character like Kazuo or Sucrose being the two best ones. That is because they can proc the Bird S and Venera set, as I mentioned earlier, reducing the resistance of enemies. Sucrose can also run Thrilling Tails, which you can give to Shang Ling, buffing her damage a lot, and she also increases the elemental mastery of your team. Kazuo has a similar role, double swirling, doing a lot of damage, grouping enemies, and proccing the Bird S and Venera set, as well as increasing your elemental damage through his passives. The way this team works is you're going to be attacking very fast with Child, being mainly a Hydro enabler, doing good amount of damage, applying Hydro fast, and allowing your Shangling to vaporize from off field, dealing massive amounts of damage. This is one of the best teams in the game. On top of that, you can use Bennett in this team to funnel particles into your Shangling during Child's downtime. When Child's ease on cooldown, you can swap your Bennett, use your elemental skill, generate pyro particles and then catch them on Shangling to get her burst back very fast without an insane amount of energy recharge. Similarly to this team, you can also use a child Beto team known as a fireworks comp where you're running child with Beto and Fischl and then the last character once again is Flex, usually a healer like Bennett or even Jean can work, greatly buffing your team's damage. Basically this team is really good, Beto deals a massive amount of damage through her parry and her burst which is very good from off field applied to all of your child's auto attacks. Since child attacks so fast, he will constantly apply Beto burst and Fischl's Oz who will deal damage from off field and also proc the electro charge reaction when paired with the child's fast hydro application. So these are therefore the two main team comps I recommend with child but there are a couple others. You can for example run him as a burst support or a quick swap styled character in many teams and you can also run him in a freeze comp. I've even seen some testing be done with Ganyu to perma freeze if you don't have Mona or some quick swap freeze teams where you pair child with a cryo support and an anemo unit swirling the freeze and perma freezing enemies with your cryo characters although the damage of this team isn't as high as the other two that I mentioned previously. Child also has good synergy with Raiden uh, which we've discovered since she really Least, and since we've been testing more and more with her in two different teams. She can be ran in this team right here, where she can be used in your downtime. When your skills on cooldown, you can swap to Raiden, deal damage through her burst, and she'll also not only deal damage, but give the elemental burst to your Shang Ling back without needing to funnel particles into her, generating energy for your entire team, which is one of Raiden's strong suits. Another team comp you can run Raiden in is actually the Taser team. You can replace Fischl in this team comp. It does make your rotations weird though, and I don't like it as much as Fischl, since Raiden and Beto don't don't work together. As I mentioned in my Raiden guide, Beto's burst does not proc off of Raiden's normal attacks inside of Raiden's burst for some stupid reason, but this team comp can still work, although the rotation will be different and a bit longer. Also, I know a lot of people try to run child with characters like Hu Tao and stuff, and while it is something that I've seen a lot of people do, it's not as good, and the reason for that is because Shang Ling's doing massive amounts of power damage from off field while your child's auto attacking. Hu Tao, on the other hand, needs to be swapped into and used as a main DPS to where when you're attacking on Hu Tao, you can't apply Hydro 
because child's not like sing so it's not off field hydro. And then when you're on child, you can't apply pyro since Hu Tao is once again only applying pyro when she's on field, which is why child synergizes well with someone like Shangling, but not as much with someone like Hu Tao. Although if you are just playing for fun casually, I know you can run like double DPS teams, but that isn't as strong as the teams that I mentioned. Okay, so with all that information out of the way, I'm now gonna do a floor 12 showcase using child and Shangling, where child's gonna be the enabler, also doing a lot of damage, with my Shangling constantly vaporizing with her pyro nato. Also, in case you're wondering, my child has level 9 talents, a skyward harp, and really good investment, honestly, two noblesse to heart of depth to maximize my burst damage since I am clearing very fast, with 72 crit rate and almost 200 crit damage. And keep in mind that obviously in the showcase, while my child will be doing a lot and a lot of hydro application and all that stuff, my Shangling's also vaporizing for massive numbers, so it is a team that has very mixed damage damage from both Child and Shangling. With that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the guide and I hope you enjoyed the showcase. So yeah, overall, as you guys can see, Child is absolutely amazing, a great enabler while also having insane burst damage, good hydro damage, good hydro application, and all that. And so I tried to cover him in as much detail as possible in this video because I feel like he's a character who's oftentimes misunderstood or underrated because of how powerful I honestly think that he truly is. He's a character that I've been using forever now, as you guys know, I've been friendship 10 with him for ages, and so I hope I did him justice in this video. I know this is a bit of a longer guide, it's probably my most detailed guide ever, I had to cut out so much because it was over 30 minutes. Be be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it, if you have any questions. Also keep in mind that if there's anything I want to add to this video or anything that changes, it will be in a pinned comment down below, so always look out for those. And this video took so long to make, so I really hope you enjoyed it. But yeah, with all that being said, I want to end this video so it's not too long. Feel free to sub, join the Discord, follow me on Twitch, all that stuff. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Greatly buffing your team's damage, and oh, <laughs> I guess the maintenance is starting now.